Good afternoon, ladies. So today I will be discussing to you the last portion of our lesson on coordinated functions, and that would be the menstrual and the ovarian cycle. So when you say when you hear the word puberty, of course you think of certain things that have that has happened to you. For example, um, developing different um, hairs all around the body for females and also our secondary sexual characteristics like the enlargement of the breasts and also even um, certain uh, experiences like menstruation. So what is the difference between <clears throat> menstrual cycle and ovarian cycle? Actually, these two are simultaneously happening or a part of it will be happening in another and so they are somewhat related. But when we talk about the menstrual cycle, this would be um, describing what happens in the uterus to prepare for a fertilized egg and the ovarian cycle is or happens um, obviously in the ovary wherein the mature the egg and the follicle is maturing and is related to um, the number of days wherein a egg, an egg is growing from its birth quote-unquote up to its maturity or ovulation and then right after that so when we say ovarian cycle, you would see this photo almost as always. And this involves the ovary and prepares the egg for maturation. So there are two different phases of the ovarian cycle. And the first phase is called the follicular phase from the word follicle. So it has something to do with the follicle. As you have as I've mentioned a while ago, a follicle is a cluster of cells that surrounds an immature egg cell. So as you can see here, there are actually many follicles. So when we were born, we have already a 2 million um, egg cells and surrounded by follicles. However, every month, only one mature egg is being released. What happens to the other follicles? The other follicles with the egg cells disintegrates. So for example, in this case, this is a primary follicle surrounding it would be uh, sorry, this is a prime, the egg cell surrounding it would be the follicle. So during this stage in the follicular phase, the follicle together with the egg cell is growing and developing. So as you can see, this is the egg cell and surrounding it are follicular cells. All right. So it's a very, it's a long stage. It takes about two weeks from day one to day 14 to grow and to mature. Look at this picture. So this is the mature follicle. Now, what happens after or during the follicular phase? Here, the anterior pituitary gland releases the follicle-stimulating hormone. That's why it's called follicle-stimulating hormone because of the um, function of the follicular cells, which is to produce its own hormone, which is estrogen, a sex hormone that aids in the growth of the follicle. Um, during this stage, it's not only FSH that is being produced by the anterior pituitary, but also the LDH. However, there are more or higher concentration of S FSH by the anterior pituitary, which stimulates the ovary, particularly the follicular cells inside the ovary, to produce its own hormone, which is estrogen. And if you look at this picture, we can see the photo of the follicle cells and also the egg cells before ovulation. If you look at this portion, this is from day 0 up to day 14. So the follicular phase happens from day 0 at the start up to day 14. If you look also at the anterior pituitary hormones, this one, the blue one, is a luteinizing hormone. And then the green one is a follicle-stimulating hormone. So it's somewhat higher, would have an, a higher level as compared to that of the luteinizing hormone. For the ovarian hormones, so I remember this is a feedback mechanism, positive feedback mechanism between the anterior pituitary and the ovary. If you can see here, the amount or level or concentration of estrogen is increasing before the 14th day, before the actual ovulation, but uh, as compared to progesterone. Progesterone will increase its level later on in the second stage or phase of the ovarian cycle. <clears throat> okay, so the transition between the follicular phase and the next phase is called ovulation, wherein the follicle ruptures and releases the mature egg cell. You can see, 
this is when this egg cell is released from the ovary and this egg cell will now travel to the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube um, is an area by which it will it will um, wait for the sperm cell to fertilize it. Now, what happens to the follicular cells that were left inside the ovary? Um, if you look into the picture, these follicular cells becomes what we call corpus luteum or the yellow body, which leads us to the next phase known as the luteal phase. The luteal phase is when the luteinizing hormone, so if you look at the connection, luteal phase, that's when anterior pituitary would produce luteinizing, high levels of luteinizing hormone. It will cause the cells to rupture and release the, uh, and, sorry, it will cause the ruptured cells, the ruptured, ruptured follicle to grow to become corpus luteum. So from the word luteum, luteal, luteinizing hormone. And when there's high levels of luteinizing hormone, corpus luteum would act also as an endocrine gland. Remember, this is inside the ovary, and ovary is an endocrine gland. So corpus luteum would also produce its own hormone known as progesterone. So during this time, there is a high level of progesterone, which signals the body to prepare for fertilization. Now, if fertilization occurs, the corpus luteum would continue to produce high levels of progesterone for several weeks. Why does it need to continue to produce high levels of progesterone for several weeks? Look at this portion. Here is the thickness of the uterine lining. So before the luteal phase, during the follicular phase, the lining of the uterus is actually thin but becomes thicker. However, after ovulation, when the mature egg is already released to the fallopian tube, there is a high level of progesterone being secreted by the corpus luteum inside the ovary. Why? Because this actually helps in the thickening of the endometrium or the uterine lining. So if you look at this again in the ovarian hormones, estrogen would decrease and progesterone, on the other hand, after ovulation, would have increased, means high, high level. Of concentration to help in preparation for fertilization or, or implantation. Again, if that will be the original or the normal way by which the human, the female human body prepares for pregnancy. However, if fertilization does not occur, the production of progesterone, the production of progesterone would slow down and would stop the ovarian cycle. So after 28 days, when it's not fertilized, it will shed off as part of the period or menstrual flow. Okay, so some quick questions. Which among the following phases of the ovarian cycle state, starts the formation of the corpus luteum? So remember, luteum, lutea, releases an ovum when the follicle is ripe. So that is the transition between follicular and luteal, which is the ovulation, and last encloses excuse me, the egg cell in a follicle. So follicle, follicular phase. <coughs> Next would be the menstrual cycle. <coughs> the menstrual cycle happens in the uterus and this is when the uterus is groomed for possible implantation and then later on pregnancy. So this too is the ovarian cycle. The menstrual cycle is somewhat is also related to the ovarian cycle because of the hormones that are being released which helps in the uh, preparation of the body particularly of the uterine wall to become thicker to prepare for pregnancy so um, the menstrual cycle is also controlled by changing levels of estrogen and progesterone if you look again in this um, ovarian hormones this portion the the estrogen level is increasing during the follicular phase and then drops during ovulation. The progesterone level during the follicular phase is low as compared to estrogen. However, after ovulation, when the, ob when the uh, egg is released, it becomes high. So before and after ovulation, there is an increased level of estrogen and progesterone, which causes this two, this one, the uterine lining, the uterus lining, are called the endometrium, to become thicker and thicker. 
and be, um, to make it more conducive for a fertilized ovum. Now, if pregnancy does not occur, the estrogen and progesterone levels would decrease, which would cause the uterine lining to shed. So again, high levels of progesterone up to the 28th day, it, it begins to um, slow down its production or decrease its production of progesterone. And the low levels of progesterone and also of estrogen would mean that the lining would break down, the uterine lining would break down and be shed off as menstruation. And the shedding of the, of the uterine lining marks the end of the menstrual cycle. Thus, the blood vessels break and bleeding occurs. So when we say menstruation, this is the process where the mixture of blood and discarded tissues leave the body through the vagina and it usually occurs about 14 days after ovulation. So um, we will be, if, if you want to know when is the next menstruation, then you can count the first day of your menstruation period. And then 14th day after that, or on the 14th day, that will be your ovulation. So this is the average. It could be before, of, before the 14th day, 13th, or after 15th. But in this, normally, this is in the average. Now, after your ovulation... Um, two weeks after that will be your next menstruation. So another 14 days on the average. At the end of the ovarian and menstrual cycle, production of estrogen and progesterone decreases, as I've mentioned a while ago. And this signals now the pituitary gland to produce FSH and LH, which starts the cycle again. So if you remember the feedback mechanism, this happens in both the testes and the ovary. Ovaries for females, of course, testes for males. Uh, so the brain, our brain, particularly the part hypothalamus, would produce the gonadotropic releasing hormone. And high levels of GnRH would cause or stimulate the pituitary, particularly the anterior pituitary gland, to produce their own hormone. So during the start of the of the um of the cycle, particularly the ovarian cycle, there's a high level of FSH. Why is there a high level of FSH? Because during this time, there's a positive feedback to the ovary, um, particularly the follicles in the ovary. So the follicle helps the egg to become, to develop and to grow maturely. All right. Now, after that, there will be an increase in the luteinizing hormone, which would also help in the production of progesterone. So if after ovulation, the follicular cells become corpus luteum and corpus luteum is able to produce progesterone. Okay, now when there's a high level of progesterone already, estrogen progesterone, this would inhibit the pituitary and also the hypothalamus to produce their own hormones. That's the negative feedback. So again, when there's a high level of estrogen and progesterone, testosterone for the males, then it would tell or it would send a message to the brain, to the hypothalamus, and to the pituitary to slow down the production of GnRH and LH and FSH. Okay, here's a video. I'll just post the video about the importance of menstruation to the body. And lastly, it's um, we'll look into the pathway of, of the sperm cell going to the egg cell. So as we know, sperm cells are producing the testes, but they do not mature there. They mature in the epididymis for two to three months. During copulation, when the penis becomes erect, they leave the epididymis and travel up to the body through the vas deferens, the connection between the testes and the urethra. But before it is expelled out of the male's body, it needs to pass on to the seminal vesicle, to the prostate gland, and to the cowper's gland, which produce the types, the different types of fluids that are needed by the sperm cell to swim uh, more easily and to live longer. And then about 200 million other sperm cells are carried out by the urethra of the penis in the process called ejaculation. Now, uh, these, sperm, these sperm cells with the semen enter the cervix and the uterus and go to the fallopian tube in search of the egg cell. If the sperm cell finds the ovum before other sperms do, it will be able to fertilize the egg. That's it. I hope you have a happy weekend. <laughs>
Thank you.